So uh, good evening, everyone. Um, we hope you had a great summit, and we hope you enjoy uh, this presentation as well. Uh, we are here today, uh, myself. My name is Akshay Parthasarathy. I'm a technical marketing engineer at NetApp. Um, we're here today with, a duo, uh, with Greg Elkenbart from Marantis and Tom Bechtold uh, from Sousa. Greg uh, and Tom, would you like to introduce yourselves? Um, hi, I'm Greg Elkenbart. I'm Senior Technical Director from Mirantis. Um, I am an OpenStack architect, and I focus on networking and storage. Yeah, I'm Thomas Bechtold. I'm working as an engineer for SUSE on the cloud product. Thank you. Um, so let's uh, take a look at the agenda. This session is going to focus on OpenStack Manila, which is the file share services project. And the first thing, uh, we would have for you is the introduction and the use cases for Manila, uh, followed by the current status of the program and the Newton release, uh, key contributors to the program, which, which includes NetApp, uh, Mirantis, and SUSE. And then we'll take you through two of the major uh, features that were released in this Newton cycle. The first one is share replication, uh, the UI part of it uh, in Horizon, uh, which is available through the Manila UI plugin. And then we will also take you through the share migration demo. Uh, share migration has been enhanced in this release. Greg will then walk you through Manila installation and fuel, and Tom will take you through Manila installation and SUSE. So Manila is for shared file systems. What Cinder is for black, block storage. What you can do with Cinder and dispense uh, block storage volumes, you can do with Manila and dispense file shares, be it uh, Windows file shares, SIFS file shares, or Unix-like file shares, Unix and Unix-like file shares, NFS. You can also work with HDFS data using Manila. It supports a wide range of network topologies, and these include uh, neutron networks, the legacy Nova network uh, using their dedicated plugins, and you can also use standalone networks. So in the figure there, I show you two Manila shares. One of the shares is for the R&D department. It's just named R&D. And what I have done is I have enabled access to two of the VMs uh, in your OpenStack Compute Cloud. And likewise, we have another sales share, just for example, and you can enable access to a couple of other shares. So the, in a sense, what I'm try, trying to say is you have a shared file system that is accessible by multiple uh, clients in Manila. So I do want to, before I skip to the slides, I do want to point out that just like you can have uh, OpenStack compute instances access your shared file systems, you can also have containers, uh, non-OpenStack uh, VMs or bare metal nodes, and also OpenStack uh, bare metal nodes. So it's not restricted to OpenStack compute. So in terms of the user foundation, uh, uh, OpenStack foundation results as far as production deployments, uh, we see a lot of adoption as far as NetApp is concerned. Also the generic driver, which includes a generic implementation on a Linux server, which is a Nova VM. So there are also a number of other options available for you, as you can see there. So the use cases for Manila are numerous, and these are just an example. So maybe you have databases such as SAP uh, or Oracle. Uh, these that we have seen with customers. Or maybe you have a standalone shared file server, right? You have an admin in your organization, and what they're doing is they have implemented some custom Perl scripts, or uh, you know they're just doing manual configuration for the uh, file server. What Manila can do for you is by using the open standard REST API, it can serve to dispense such file shares in a much more um, uh, in a much more efficient way. So you could also make use of Manila for things like DevOps. I'm going to show you a demo in which we have used Manila for the continuous integration uh, logs. So I'll show you that demo. And then you can also use it in terms of hybrid clouds and private clouds. Uh, these are just examples. So one of the value adds of Manila is that it allows you to create your own marketplace, or what we call the storage service catalog. If you uh, uh, if you tier your storage, for example, maybe you have a good, best, and better tier, you can have what are known as extra specs 
uh, and leverage these extra specs specifically for each tier. In this case, we have a dev and test uh, workload or use case. And uh, we're using it with certain characteristics that include compression, quality of service, and so on. So likewise, we have a database as a service uh, workload. We can use another tier for that and leverage a different set of extra specs. So VDI, in this case, is another great use case. Um, and we are using a different set of uh, extra specs. So these uh, kind of uh, the marketplace, each of the tiers in the marketplace are not restricted in the number of workloads that you can have. So maybe you, uh, just like how you have the database as a service workload, we have provisioned again and an NFV workload that also makes use of the best tier. And it's not always good, better, and best. You can customize it however you want. In this case, we have another tier called analytics, and this is for your analytics workload. In terms of the status as of the Newton release, uh, Manila has been production ready since Liberty, and in Newton, and in the Metaka cycle, and more so in the Newton cycle, we're enhancing the, uh, the project further. The total number of drivers, which includes uh, NetApp, of course, is 17, and we have completed a total of 14 blueprints in this cycle. You can see the number of bugs resolved. Uh, in terms of the lines of code, it's over 100,000 lines of code. And the two uh, major features are the Manila UI integration, and this is for share migration and share replication. I will show you using the Manila UI which share replication. So this will be a multi-availability zone demo. And then there's also the two-phase share migration, which can significantly reduce your downtime. Um, also already included for you, right? You have things like replication using the CLI as of the previous release itself, and then consistency groups to take consistent snapshots of multiple uh, Manila shares at the same time. And uh, flexible share sizes, um, this is a, depending on the backend you use, you can in increase or decrease your share size on demand. You can go from one to 100 GB and then go back to a 50 GB if you choose to do that. Uh, Things like importing new file shares into Manila, be it NFS or CEPs. The major players, you can see them here. Um, NetApp is one of the contributors. You can see all, all the others as well. Uh, the project team lead is actually an architect uh, at NetApp. We also have representation at Miranta, Sousa, and a number of other companies. Uh, and I have talked to you about the lines of code already. It's over 100,000 lines. So I want to show you both of these features, the first one being the share replication UI through demos. So before I show you the demo, I'll give you a brief overview of what you're going to see. This is your Manila share, and you have some logs that you have retrieved from your continuous integration system. They can be any type of logs, but in this case, we have used that. Uh, we use Logstash uh, to generate event data, so we run a CLI command with Logstash to generate this. After that, you can use Elasticsearch to generate indices on uh, the event data that Logstash generates for you. Using the indices, um, what we can do is we can use a visualization tool such as Kibana to give you that kind of graphical analysis that you can use for logs. So this can be very productive in terms of if you have an IT department with huge amounts of logs to go through. What I've done is I've replicated the share from one availability zone to another, and we're gonna show what happens when the first uh, availability zone goes down. And what the way we simulate this is I simply go and disable the NFS service on that particular share. So as a result of disabling the NFS service, you're going to lose that visualization that you see on Kibana. And then we promote the second share to the primary, and uh, we generate the event data, we get the indices from Elasticsearch, and then uh, we again get the visual visualization that we want uh, through Kibana. So at a very high level, uh, what we're showing is the visualization through Kibana once uh, the visualization through Kibana after a disaster has occurred in the first availability zone. So I'm logging into Horizon. This is, everything's gonna be done in the UI. 
and we create a share. We, the share is 50 gigabytes in size and DR enabled, which means disaster recovery enabled, and the availability zone we choose is Barcelona. There is a second availability zone called Madrid, and we'll be taking a look at setting up a replica of the share uh, as the demo proceeds. So for now, what we're doing is we're adding a rule, and we're going to give it a Manila by default denies access. So we're explicitly allowing access to the Logstash VM. So that is the export policy, and we can use this export policy of the Manila share for Logstash. So here's the Logstash VM, and we are mounting using the export policy. And you can see over here it is mounted. We're going to go into the mount point, and we're going to make a couple of directories. The first directory will be your CI logs, and the second directory is the indices. So the CI logs, we uh, we, uh, what I've done is I've pulled the logs from the CI system locally uh, at NetApp, and I'm using that as inputs here. So these, this is the configuration for Logstash, just um, showing you that you're using this particular directory for the Logstash logs, and then we're using Elasticsearch as the search engine. Now, if we look at the Elasticsearch configuration, what we'll find is the Elasticsearch is using the same mount point, but uh, the directory slash log slash indices. So it's a new directory within the same mount point. I'm starting the Elasticsearch service. And then over here, I start the log stash uh, service so that I can generate event data that Elasticsearch can then run on. So it can generate its indices. So this is Logstash running. Elasticsearch has already been started. So what we're doing is we, we assume a few minutes have passed, and we are looking at Kibana, which is a visualization tool. And we should be, you know, after these few minutes that have passed, be able to, you know, search for errors and error messages and see if we get any search results. We're just searching for the uh, word error. Looks like that has a few matches, and then we search for error and no valid host. Looks like it still works fine. So essentially, it's working fine in this Barcelona availability zone. So this is uh, the Manila UI. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a replica in the Madrid availability zone. So we choose Madrid. We create a replica. We, made it, we wait a few minutes, so I have fast forwarded the video over here uh, because it is a huge share, but we wait until it becomes available and in sync. And this is the actual disaster. I'm disabling NFS on the primary copy, which is the Barcelona availability zone. And at this point in time, the status goes red. So I've disabled access, it doesn't have the data, uh, it goes red. I promote the replica in the Madrid availability zone. Just takes a few seconds for the promotion to happen. And now we get the, um, the export location of the Madrid availability zone, Manila share. So we are unmounting uh, the Barcelona availability zone share that is no longer active, and then we're mounting the Madrid availability zone share. Going to check whether we have the data that we need. So we go into MNT logs, and we should see that CI logs and indices folder. So if we go into CI logs, do we have the data that was uh, replicated? So we have a number of text files. These are basically the logs that Logstash is running on. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to run Logstash again to generate more event data uh, on this uh, with using the new Madrid availability zone. And this is going to you know, basically keep running. And in parallel, we have the indices already from the Barcelona availability zone. So we're going to just take a look at Kibana and see whether we can see those search results again. 
So we see that Kibana is up. It's not in a status red anymore. And we can see that we are able to search info, share, and created. Those are the terms we have used. Seems to be working fine. So that's basically share application uh, in this particular CI CD environment. So the other thing I want to show you is Manila two phase migration. And I do have a demo for this as well. So for two phase migration, uh, what we've done is let's say you have a hundred terabyte share with 95 terabytes of data. So in the, in the previous iteration, what would have happened when you migrate is that it would have copied all the data over and until all the data is copied, you actually wouldn't have access to the uh, Manila share that you are migrating from. In two-phase migration, we're actually giving you read-only access as the data is being copied, and then maybe at a scheduled downtime, you can quickly switch over uh, to the new share, uh, migrate the share over, and your end users can use the new export location. So significant reduction in terms of the downtime. Uh, the uh, stuff we will be working on is the loss of metadata. In the case of NetApp, the metadata loss is your snapshots. But these will be fixed in the future, near future. So we will be adding the ability to have writable copies. So even as you add, uh, even as you're migrating, you will have the ability to write uh, preservation of metadata, including snapshots. Uh, Non-disruptive migration, so this is interesting. Non-disruptive migration, this is the demo I'll show you. Uh, I was already checked in by a colleague of mine, Gotham, um, right after the Newton release. Uh, and this is the demo I'll show you. But as of the Newton code, uh, this has not made it there. Uh, and we have driver-assisted migration. So if you have that large 100 terabyte share, you want to take advantage of the back end and do the migration uh, as efficiently as possible. So that's also coming up for you. So on a timeline, with the current two-phase migration, your client is accessing the Manila share. The administrator um, issues a migration start command. The client has the ability to use the share in a read-only mode as the migration is happening. And then after, uh, after, the, after some time, the share is going to be completely all the data is going to be completely copied over, and then at that time, if you query the OpenStack CLI, it's going to indicate, for example, phase one done. The administrator issues a migration complete command. Maybe this is during a scheduled downtime. And then at that point in time, the original share is deleted. The new share can be accessed by your client. So this is the demo. I do want to point out that this is using non-disruptive migration which is actually checked in, uh, but it's pretty cool in terms of what it can do. This will be part of the Okata release. So we're creating a Manila share, and this share is actually used for multiple cinder volumes. It can be used for cinder volumes. We're gonna show you an example of using Manila for cinder. We have a 200 gigabyte Manila share. And what I'm doing over here is I am, uh, I'm allowing access uh, to this particular subnet for that Manila share. So we have the export location here. And using the export location, what we can do is we can use this for Cinder. So I go into, um, I go into Cinder Conf just to show you the backend that we're using. We're using an NetApp backend in this case, but you can use another uh, backend that supports NFS. And we go into shares.conf. So what I'm doing in shares.conf is I'm actually uh, pasting the export location of the Manila share, right? So, and we restart the Cinder services and we should see that, you know, the Cinder service starts up successfully. So we wait a couple of seconds So the first thing we're doing is we're actually getting the pools. Um, and what we notice is that, okay, there is one active pool. It looks like it's in that 172, 21, 24 subnet. And it has the same export location that we specified earlier. So if you look at the services now, we see that we do have that uh, Cinder volume services up and enable, enabled and up. 
And this is actually where we actually create a Nova instance that uses, that is backed by Cinder. But Cinder, in turn, is using that Manila share. So here is our Nova instance that was created. Take, take a few seconds to actually go into running mode. OK, and here's where uh, we split into multiple screens. And at the bottom screen, what I'm doing is I'm showing you the Nova instance that has booted up. And that is its IP address. So I'm going to log into this Nova instance from the top two screens. So that is the first screen that I've uh, logged into. And then we log into the same Nova instance from the second screen. OK, so the point of non-disruptive migration is that it has to be truly non-disruptive. So what we're doing is we are actively going to generate I.O. as the migration uh, is kicked off and completed. So what we notice is that this uh, particular um, uh, Manila share is on this back end called uh, OpenStack2, which is in AGGR2. The source is AGGR2, that long string that you see there. The destination, we do have another destination that is available, which is AGGR1. It ends with the word AGGR1. So I'm going to actively generate IO as we go, as we migrate the Manila share from AGGR2 to AGGR1. And the way uh, we actively generate I.O. is by using DD. And then on the other screen, we're going to actually look at the I.O. And it looks like we have around 400 IOPS or so. So if the, disrupt if the migration was disruptive, that I.O. should basically go down to zero. And not only that, we should lose connection to the instance. So uh, we are going to perform the migration to AGGR1. And we're looking at the progress here. So after some time, the progress is going to say migration phase one done. And after that has happened, we do see that the IOs still seem to be going on. And we can issue the migration complete command to actually complete the migration. So throughout this whole process, right, even after migration underscore success, um, we, which will happen very shortly, just waiting a couple of seconds. So migration underscore success. We see that you know, the IOs are still going on. We have around 400 IOs or so. There's been no loss in connectivity to the instance. So truly non-disruptive. So that's everything I have for you. Uh, we had the share application UI integrations and the migration feature through the two-phase migration that was introduced in the Metaka cycle. I now want to pass it over to Greg to tell you more about Malala and Mirantis. Thank you so much. All right, so Mirantis have been participating in the Manila project for uh, a while now. Uh, but uh, before OpenStack um, 8.0, uh, there was no um, automated way to install Manila. If you needed Manila, you could always add it as an extra service to an existing running cluster, but it did require manual installation configuration. In, uh, Fuel 9.0 and uh, above, uh, we've added uh, installation and configuration automation. So now you can automatically install Manila whether when you create a new environment, or you can go back to an existing 9.0 environment um, and add Manila to it. So a little bit of detail about the Fuel plugin. Um, it's an optional services. Uh, just like uh, all of the other services such as Murano and Sahara, just to keep the footprint small. Uh, and then uh, you have ability to control placement. Um, so the Manila API and Manila scheduler are hardwired to go on the controller because their footprint is relatively small. But Manila share and Manila data um, are coded as separate roles, which means that you can have a flexible placement either on a controller or on another standalone node um, in order to uh, provide it uh, a better service. Um, the initial uh, release of the Fuel plugin itself, not Manila, just the plugin, supports the generic and the NetApp driver. And if you need additional drivers, these can be added um, afterwards. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the demo. Uh, 
All right. If you guys can see that, uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do is um, install Manila as a plugin. Uh, some, manual, uh, some CLI configuration obviously is required in order to load a plugin into Fuel. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to use Fuel plugins install command to install uh, the plugin. As you see now, we have a uh, plugin installed. So we can go ahead uh, and um, uh, go uh, to the Fuel uh, UI and create the environment. Uh, basic environment creation step, standard for a, any Fuel-based deployments. Just define the name, uh, uh, what OS it's running on, uh, the VLAN and networking type. So now here is Manila um, as a service. You can enable it in your existing environment. The same would work uh, if you had to add it to another environment. Uh, any OpenStack environment requires controls and compute nodes, which we're defining right now. And we're going to go ahead and uh, add two more roles, as you can see right now, for Manila Share and Manila Data. Uh, next, we're just going to do a quick networking test uh, to make sure that uh, we can uh, pass the network traffic because we reshuffle the interfaces. Uh, and um, after that test, we'll just take a look at that everything is fine and deploy the environment, which will create the environment. So uh, in the settings, as you can see, we can use the generic driver. We can also um, add support for the NetApp driver. Here we are configuring some basic configuration information that's necessary for us to um, access the NetApp driver. Uh, both drivers can be activated at once uh, in the environment. It will support multiple backends. Uh, oh, uh, network connectivity check is successful, so let's go ahead and deploy the changes. Through the magic of Cinema, obviously, we'll accelerate the 10 minutes to 30 minute installation process for OpenStack. So now you see that the OpenStack has successfully deployed. We'll run a quick health check. Um, obviously, since this is running in a lab, some of the tests won't pass, but it'll just demonstrate the fact that the environment is up and operational, and then we're going to go uh, do some I.O. All right, so we'll go ahead and launch Horizon, uh, create a couple of shares, and write some data. So we're going to go ahead and create the share, uh, share name, uh, basic information is required, and you can supply uh, extra specs to specify the backend uh, that you want to do in multi-backend use case. Okay, so let's create a share on that backend. All right, awesome. Okay, so the share is created. Now we will want to uh, Create another one, okay? Uh, and uh, after that, we're going to go create a instance. Uh, and uh, we will uh, mount the share on the instance and just demonstrate that the IO uh, can be done to it. All right, so the instances are running, the shares are available, so now we're going to go uh, into the instance uh, UI and make sure that uh, the shares are um, accessible. Obviously, because the default configuration on Manila uh, does not specify any access controls, uh, the initial mount command will fail. Um, and you'll see that the uh, Manila access controls are actually working. Uh, and then we're going to go add ourselves officially to the access control list, try the mount command again, it'll succeed. All right, so we're gonna go back, add ourselves to the access control list, and try the mount command.
now the mount command will succeed and we'll be able to uh, mount the share and write some data on it. Great, so now we're gonna go into the second instance and make sure that uh, this is truly a shared file system. So we're going to try to read the share from, uh, from that instance and make sure we can uh, write to it and append to the file system. As you can see, we're able to read the share written by something else, so let's go ahead and echo into it to uh, add another line to it, make sure we can also write from the second instance. Excellent, we were able to append the file, so obviously both nodes can access the file read write. All right. So uh, this concludes our uh, basic demo, uh, and I believe uh, next is uh, the SUSE integration with Manila. Can you hear me now? Oh, right, now it works. Okay, so I'll talk um, a bit about the um, state in open, uh, SUSE Open Stack Cloud, so the Manila state. Um, well, so um, Manila is uh, fully supported and integrated since SUSE OpenStack Cloud 6. Um, so the controller side of Manila, which uh, includes the API and the scheduler, is uh, highly available and um, we are including the NetApp driver and um, the generic driver for testing basically, so that's not supported. But you can also add any custom driver, whatever you want. Um, for the upcoming SUSE OpenStack Cloud 7, there will be the CephFS driver also included. And of course, it's updated to the to the actual Newton release. So um, yeah, I'm giving now just a quick demo how it looks like. So um, SUSE is using Crowbar for the deployment, and um, so that's a pre-deployed uh, yeah environment with a couple of nodes. We have um, a cluster running, or basically two clusters: a service cluster and a network cluster running, and we are going to deploy Manila now. Oh, no, not like that. Oh, that does the trick. Okay. So here we have the overview of the two clusters, um, so service cluster and network cluster. These are a list of services we um, can deploy, so there is a lot of stuff already deployed and we are going to deploy Manila now. Um, you can configure multiple backends that's similar to, to Cinder. And we are uh, configuring the NetApp, NetApp driver now and um, yeah, just create a new backend, add the um, V server name and also host name and port and stuff you need. So that takes a bit. So here we go. So then there is a default backend pre-configured. We are going to delete that because we, need, we don't need it yet. And here's just, uh, I'm just showing how to configure any other driver which is available in Manila. So you just add the driver class there and you can add uh, random key value pairs which end up in the Manila conf in the end. So you can, can enable any backend you want or any third party driver if you have one. So we are not using that there. Um, so we just have the NetApp backend and um, here we are assigning the roles to the different nodes or clusters. So we are going to use the service cluster for the Manila service role, which includes API and scheduler, and we are deploying um, the Manila share service on two different nodes. Then it takes some time. I think I cut that off. Yes. Um, yeah. Now we are going to the, um, to the dashboard, to Horizon. Um, and try to create a share.
So first thing you need for a share is a shared type where we can, where we can um, specify extra specs, for example, that actually I mentioned already previously. Um, and afterwards, um, when you created the share type, you can um, create a share and select the share type. So you give it a name, um, you select the size and the share type, and you create it. That's it. So um, if you have any questions about Manila, there are a couple of resources. So there is, of course, the source code on GitHub. Um, there's a wiki page um, which, which links to different resources. There's IRC channel and there's a weekly meeting on IRC, which is also uh, on the wiki page. Um, so there are also resources about NetApp, Mirantis and Susie, if you're interested in that. Um, yeah, and thanks a lot. So any questions? Sure. Replication from Ceph to NetApps. Um, okay, so let's take that offline. I, I have not personally tested that, so. I'm pretty sure you can't. So replication just works in one driver. And not all drivers support a replication. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure as the project is enhanced, yeah, so. Any other questions? Great, well, we'll still stick around if you have any follow-up questions. Otherwise, have a wonderful night. Thank you. Oh.